everyone, thanks for joining us. And today we're gonna give you the tea on HIV and read all of these mean, ignorant, stigmatic tweets for Phil. You know, when I have my tea, I always like it with a little something sweet, but sometimes sour, lemon. Hello, lemon. Hey, girly, how are you doing? I'm so good. So happy to see you today. You look beautiful. I'm loving the purple. I know, right? Thank you so much for having me. Yes, so good to be seeing you and talking with you today. And next up, we have the queen mother, queen auntie. I feel like auntie vibes right now. I know me, thanks. Thank you, thank you. I know I'm the oldest, but most flawless. So thank you so much. You are serving first Aunt Viv vibes. I am loving every second of it. Thank you for being here today. You are welcome. Next up, we have our creative mathematician queen, Kine. How are you today? Yes, girl. Class is in session, honey. All right. Next up, we have our fire-breathing, always-smoking, hot <laughs> Scarlet Bobo. How are you, Scarlet, today? Oh, hot and sexy. What's up? How are you? Yes. So good. And yes, you are sexy today so are, ready, yeah, are you ready I'm feeling to cute for once on these tweets maybe just swallow them whole i'm ready girl and you know i love to swallow so let's do it oh my gosh lovely and last but not least beautiful brilliant and bizarro boa how happy are you we are pre-recording today <laughs> What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to be here. I'm having an amazing day. I'm feeling stunning, gorgeous, and blue. Okay, great. Well, thank you everyone for coming today. And so today, um, the whole point of this is talking about ignorance, talking about stigma related to people living with HIV. Today, we'd like to thank Gilead and the Ontario HIV Treatment Network for gathering us all here today to talk about mean tweets, which have been so common online where people are using stigmatic and ignorant language, talking about folks with HIV. And today we're gonna to be smashing the stigma by <laughs> dragging these mean tweets. On a trip to Africa, hope I don't get AIDS, LOL. <laughs> LOL, if I ran into you, I'd punch in your face. If you smoke, you deserve cancer. And if you have sex, not wearing a condom, you deserve HIV. Well, you deserve to get a hit by a bus. HIV is what happens when you go against the God's law. If you don't obey him, you will get the gay plague. Well, first of all, the gay plague is chromatica, and we all have it. If you smoke and die of lung cancer, that's a choice at this point. Same for unprotected sex and HIV. Be smart, duh. That is so stupid. Like, who tweeted this? Like, what a freaking idiot. There's absolutely no way to prevent HIV. Maybe don't be gay. That could prevent it. Hmm, maybe if your mom swallowed, that would have prevented this tweet. Being careless with sexual partners without protection, one after another one, what do you expect besides HIV and pregnancy? Okay, first of all, slut shaming, not cool. There are many people who are promiscuous, having multiple partners who are still safe. And listen, at the end of the day, HIV and pregnancy are not punishments for sex. It's disgusting that California now considers intentionally spreading HIV to be a misdemeanor. In Cali, getting drunk is the same as spreading AIDS. Cool. <laughs> it's very clear that you not only don't understand how AIDS is spread, but you also don't understand anything about the law. So you know what? Just go back to school, bitch. <laughs> Whoops, sat down to pee on the public toilet and I probably got HIV. Um, uh, open up the schools. Open up the schools. There is no going back if you get HIV. Might as well go off the grid. There's no hope. We need to contact Twitter and take their accounts off. And I think they need to go off the grid. That's what needs to happen. I put clean only in my dating profile because I don't need any dirty HIV matches. And don't worry, people who have HIV don't need your dirty, dirty mouth either. If only we could do the same for cold and flu season like they did for COVID or even HIV. 
Mm, heard that's a big problem. This person is a fucking nerd. I was at the doctor's office and they asked if I agreed to them doing an HIV test on me. And obviously I said, no, I'm not gay. So why would I? Well, I'm pretty sure you probably are gay and I'm pretty sure you are a terrible human being. So <laughs> what limits, if any, do you think there should be on businesses demanding certain behaviors or conditions from their customers? Businesses should be able to demand vaccine passports. Okay. Can they bar people with HIV? Right. Uh, I don't know what kind of businesses you're frequenting. I mean, maybe if you're at a brothel, they might screen for STIs. I mean, I won't judge, but you really can't make a connection between having HIV and be not being vaccinated for COVID-19. I mean, COVID-19, we know, is airborne and spread across close distances. We can't say the same for HIV. So get with the program, honey. Madonna is allowing her Black son to wear a skirt. I've lost all respect for you. Black homosexuals catch HIV and you're okay with that? You are gross for real. You don't care, your kid will become infected. Like, I didn't realize HIV was carried in the fucking labels of an H&M skirt, y'all. Relax. Where's the line in getting infected with HIV? A hug? Sitting on a sheer toilet seat? Like, I'm not trying to catch HIV. Oh my god, I really feel like people are living in the Stone Ages these days. Like, what kind of, like, this person actually exists? Okay, but if businesses can require proof of COVID vaccination or masks, can they also prevent people with HIV from entering too? What? So, in our tweets, we heard people talking about people living with HIV. They're irresponsible, careless, gross, even. How do you think these misconceptions are perpetuated in Canada? Do you feel like this is a big problem here? Do you feel as though comments like this online or in person are something that happen a lot in our community? Well, I feel it's dangerous and violent um, because our community is not any of those things. Um, when people say uneducated things like that, especially for a younger generation growing up, it's like, that's the first experience of us and that's totally not true and so conversation needs to happen these statements are very gross and very damaging and very violent and we need to definitely change that direction and that narrative we always forget sometimes that our words can be violence towards others and it's not just always physical. well daniela i feel the same the same responses they have about us is exactly the same things they're saying it's violent, it promotes violence, it makes people scared. Um, yeah, it's just wrong. Like you can't go about doing stuff. People need to be like checking themselves and, and stop being so ignorant. And it's like, I don't know, people just need to take a step back sometimes and then switch roles. How would you feel, you know, if the roles were switched? Like these things are untrue. No one likes rumors about themselves, you know? So like the conversation is definitely important and always needs to happen. And that's the only way we will um, create change if we keep on moving forward in a, a positive direction. What impacts do you think social posts like this can have on people who are early on in their self-discovery of their orientation, their sexuality, and just who they are? I think it instills fear in people and it's really it's really not a good thing to do, especially to people at a young age, because they're very impressionable and they believe a lot of things that they hear. So I think it can be really detrimental to one, their outlook on the community, two, their, their self-worth. And three, I think it's also bad because if you're telling a young person this, and this is something they believe, when conversations happen, in more of a public setting or whatever, they may be um, echoing these lies that they hear. Yeah, exactly. And I work with youth, and a lot of the times I'm debunking a lot of these ideas of, oh, if I'm gay, am I going to get HIV automatically? As though it's assumption just being a part of a community makes someone more susceptible to, or not more susceptible, but automatically makes them, oh yes, because I am gay, I will be HIV positive. So yeah, that's exactly what you're talking about in that total sense of it creates this idea of wanting to hide more in the sense of I don't want to be who I am because I am scared of a virus when there are 
there is prep, there is U equals U, which means undetectable equals untransmittable. Just, I will say it till the hilltops, right? And it's that idea of creating that knowledge so that we can help prevent um, not just transmission, but also help prevent people from thinking that being part of a community automatically creates a virus. Like, I don't watch the news ever. I don't go on and, and, and you know, constantly Google the facts, but like, we see all these things and we just take them at face value and we read them and we believe them, you know? And I think that that's where the harm is, is that there's just not enough education out there that's true, honest news, that's true things that we should all be learning. There's so much out there and there's so many, you know, news resources that are just honestly spewing out lies and spewing out misinformation. And that's why I think it's so important to like educate yourself as well, you know, like you can so easily Google and find resources that are actually going to help you. And I think that OHTN is actually really important and really valuable because it's somewhere you can go to just get true information. So if you're ever curious, if you ever feel like you don't know enough, it's so easy to just log on to somewhere like that and find so much out and, and really, really learn from people who actually know the truth about this and, and you know, and all of that kind of stuff. Exactly. And that is why sex education is also so important. Because like, how is your sex education? Raise your hand if it was trash. <laughs> you know, right? And especially like for queer people, it's really, you know, <laughs> it's one thing to learn about the reproductive system. That's lovely. And we should all absolutely know about that. But it's a whole nother conversation to talk about what queer love and sex is. And that's not something that is taught in school. And that's not something that, you know, you can honestly learn just by figuring it out. And that's what a lot of us have had to do is, is just kind of enter into these sexual relationships and sexual experiences with no knowledge of, of the truth and no knowledge of what's actually out there. And I think that that's something we need to take upon ourselves. But like for everyone watching, we got the links, bitch, go ahead, <laughs> scroll to the bio. And that's the thing too, is that's why I do queering the curriculum, but it's not about queering the curriculum. It's about talking about folks living with disability, talking about folks that are having different types of sex that isn't just a vagina and a penis. It's about making it more inclusive. And that's what I love about our queer community as a queer person is that idea of queering just means making it for everybody, which is absolutely what I love. So. More than 60,000 Canadians are living with HIV and AIDS in our country. And they, a lot of those people have partners. So when we're talking about HIV and undetectable equals untransmittable, U equals U, it's also talking about not only people living with HIV, but also their partners and future partners. So Kind, how do you feel about that? You know, based on conversations I've had with people who have HIV, they find that for so many you know, people out there in the dating world, having HIV is like a deal breaker in a relationship. And I think there's still so much war, there's still so much more work that needs to be done in educating people that, you know, you can have HIV and have virtually no risk of passing it on to a sexual partner, even if you're having sex without condoms, as long as you are, you know, on the right medications, if your partner is on PrEP, there's so many ways to live a completely healthy, normal life with HIV. And Scarlett, how do you feel about communication and knowing your status? Well, I think both of those are extremely important. Knowing your status is very important because you never know. You could be passing this around to so many people like unwillingly, unknowingly. And to take away that fear that we've been talking about, that fear of the stigma, that fear of what people are going to say about me, that fear of how are people going to perceive what I, who I am when I tell them I have HIV or when I tell them I'm undetectable. And it's as easy as starting up a conversation with when was the last time you were tested? What were you tested for? You know, if I'm going to have sex with you without a condom, that is also the risk that I'm taking to get so much, I, not even HIV. And having that knowledge and having that conversation with your partner is the most important because then you're protecting yourself, you're protecting your partner, you're protecting everybody else you may sleep with or they may sleep with. And it's just an easy, safe way to move on. Yeah, communication is really key in all parts of our life. And especially when we're talking about 
knowing our status and talking to others about it and doing the knowledge our, and getting the knowledge ourselves, right? And knowing that before we even go in to have uh, sex with another partner. Do you feel as though the people who would most benefit from PrEP are getting the right information and access to what they need? I don't think so, because even myself, I feel like I don't know enough. It's hard to to find information right now, you know what I mean? And I think this is why it's important to have these amazing conversations. I'm the exact same way. I'm just starting to learn about PrEP and has it taken me too long? Is that bad? Sometimes you feel alone and stuff like that. And then, and all of us girls, like we are public figures and influencers in the community. So sometimes I feel super nervous to be there and be a beacon of hope when I don't know anything. So yeah, I struggle with that. PrEP is a, still a relatively new drug, and it's uh, relatively new that we are combating this, you know, for everyone. And there are so many people living with HIV that could have benefited from this earlier. But unfortunately, HIV was seen as something that, you know, gay men deserved. And it was seen as something for so long by so many people that was like, oh, well, only, you know, this certain kind of person would get this you know sti but that's not true at all there are so many people from so many different walks of life that are at risk for hiv and there's so many people you know that that might never even know if they're living with hiv and i think that that's something that is really scary because there's still the stigma for it and there's still you know so many people that would be terrified to go to their family doctor or you know their regular care physician and ask about this there are still so many people that even if they did have access to this information the stigma of it is still too scary for them to really have this conversation yeah and going back to what we said in in regards to you know how this affects our orientation how this affects our sexuality sense of if we are afraid of our sexuality we're afraid to have conversations with our general practitioner right so how kind how do you think that folks can create more of an open atmosphere with their doctors and you know clinics and things like that so that they can get the access to the medications that they need i feel the sexual education system really needs uh, to be improved so that uh young people have the tools and have the language to have these conversations with their families and with their doctors. I want to say, like, I totally understand what everyone's saying. And I do agree that maybe in, in sex ed, um, these resources aren't given to young folk as much as they should be. But, you know, it, it also depends on where you live. Like, I live uh, in Toronto. I live in the village. And and I can walk out my door and I'll see I'll see a sign for prep and stuff. Like, there's the information is out there and thank God we're living in a fast moving time with social media and everything, because, you know, all you have to do is Google it. Or even if I go on my Twitter or my Facebook or my Instagram, I, I get ads for it. So it's really like, it has been uh, not talked about as much before, but I really think the wheels are turning in the right direction and information is, is becoming more and more accessible for example, look at this amazing discussion we're having we're having today. Exactly, exactly. And thank you for bringing up the community piece because there are folks that are living in rural communities where it's where is the access to prep? Where is the HIV clinic? Right? Where are those things? So we need to start bringing those those great resources to rural communities because they deserve it as well. So with our next question, we're going to be talking about the diversity of options and the diversity of being able to have different options in regards to community organizations, online resources, and just a greater wealth for people to tap into so that they can know more about PrEP and the options that are there and available to them. So how do you folks feel about that? Sex unites us all. We are all having sex, no matter if you're gay or straight or black, white or brown, religious or not religious, no matter what language you speak, HIV can affect us all. It doesn't discriminate. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, your sexual health is your responsibility. So you have to take that responsibility into your own hands. I think that like, you know, 
there obviously should be more resources. There obviously should be more option. And there obviously, you know, if there wasn't more, if there wasn't enough already, we wouldn't be having this conversation. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I do think obviously there's so much information we all are missing out on, but there are a lot of resources out there. And I think that one thing that we can all do is just take one step in the right direction, find one organization and really get to know that organization, really get to know that organization's resources and really get to know, you know, everything you can from one place. And that's a good start. And I absolutely love that because it's the total idea of finding a community organization, whether that be a sexual health clinic, whether that be a queer organization near you that you can trust and saying, Hey, I have some information or I have no information and I need some more. And as a person who works for a queer organization, I know that we're always willing to give people as much information as we possibly can. I also think it it, it goes on us. It goes on, we have to get over the fear in ourselves and we have to ask the questions. We have to think about our personal health, you know, because we've got one body, we got one life, YOLO, we got to live it cute and we got to live it fierce. So we have to make those steps. We have to take those steps in re- in giving ourselves more information. I just want to thank all of the queens who were so open and honest and vulnerable today. And make sure that you stay tuned till the end because we'll have resources listed for anybody who needs more information surrounding PrEP. Thank you so much for having me a part of this. I'm so glad that I'm able to take part in a project to help the world be better honestly like we are really making change here and let's just keep going like we're we're in the right direction so i guess until next time thank you gilead and ohtn honestly this was a very amazing day actually for me i've learned a lot stuff i haven't known before i've learned from daniela today so thank you daniela as well um and thank you girls uh scarlet kine boa and lemon um it's just it's it's amazing to have just different generations here and different experiences um we all learn at the same time you know i love you Thank you so much for having us today. And thank you everyone who watched all the way to the end. Remember, do not let fear, do not let anything get in the way of taking care of yourself and taking care of your partners. Thanks to Gilead and OHTN for holding this event for us all to talk about our sexual health. And here is to us and here's to taking our own sexual health into our own hands. Oh my God, Kiliat and OHCN, thank you so, 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 so much for having me a part of today. This has been so important. Thank you for having me a part of the conversation. I think for all of us as drag entertainers, as queer people, we should be being a part of this conversation every single day. We should be ending the stigma. We should be helping everyone just love each other a little bit more. So thank you. I'm so happy to be a part of this conversation. Thank you for all of your knowledge. Thank you for spending time with us. I love you guys so much. Bye.